in Mexico, there's more than 73,000 people missing right now. It is a very sensitive problem that started in 2006 and has been uh, growing. Every single day, there's more than 10 women killed in this country. And every single day, these people disappearing. Community for me is um, approaching the other, the other individual that, that may be having the problematic I'm trying to address and to uh, get closer to this individual within his uh, social uh, group with his other, these other individuals that may form their own community itself. And like in the case of Rastreadoras, which is this group of trackers of El Fuerte at Los Mochis in the northern state of Sinaloa, uh, I have been uh, trying to visit them to understand what their problematics are, what are the problematics they find on the field, because as you know, the, the, the tool that I developed for them needed to be tried and on, on, on the actual uh, expedition uh, site. And um, to understand where the problematics that they're having is a way of, of making this community, of making community happen. Uh, now, um, for uh, understanding the whole problematic of the territory is very important. To understand the whole uh, process that is going on in Mexico since 2014, uh, 2012, even uh, several decades before, uh, and what they are have been calling the war on drugs in Mexico, is, is very important to understand the whole problematic of the country. This is not a regional problem only. but. In order to build community, I need to go down into the field. This is not something that you do just in a, in a kind of a panoramic view or just like in a drone kind of a, a approach. You really need to go to the ground to go and do the things that these people is doing in order to understand, feel, and, and have this possibility of, of getting closer to what uh, the problematic is within this community. And in that sense, for me, to build community, to be part of a community, is to be able to get closer to these processes. That is, I do have a sense of, 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 of fear, of uh, urgency in Mexico City. Nevertheless, Veracruz, uh, Monterrey, uh, Los Mochis, and many, many other cities in the country, they have different kind of a, a processes of violence going on. It is important to understand them. Uh, in order to build community, what I can do is to approach them to bring them um, the possibility that I have to do this kind of a long-term art research projects in which I, I, I focus on these problematics and give visibility to, to the problematic itself. And by giving visibility through aesthetic objects, through uh, participatory installations, through these kind of tools that I've been designing for, the, for these communities, I am able also to open up a dialogue around this problematic. And by open up this dialogue, it may be an opportunity to get some empathy from other groups of people regarding what is going on with these specific collectives. Listening practices are also very important for this project, to listen to the individuals I work with. Why? Because they have been silenced through all this process of violence and fear. Uh, sometimes the way of controlling these communities from military, police forces, and also from cartel members is through fear. And one of the ways of controlling them and, and making them feel unsafe is by making them silence. Uh, they have been killing uh, uh, journalists, they have been killing activists. Whoever wants to say something to speak about the problem is also silenced through force or through other means. And in that sense, to have complete communities that are not willing to talk is, is very uh, sad and is something that has to be, a circle that has to be broken. And I found that the way of approaching this problematic specifically is by being able to listen and to witness what has to be 
to be said and to be told and to be seen in these communities. And this is all things that you can just do by being inside of the community and having the time to get into their own processes and understand what is going on. These unnecessary force number three also helps uh, to leverage uh, communities to drive social change in a way that uh, it allows, it provides for certain technologies to be on use for free for these groups and, and they can decide the scope of the use, uh, what data are they going to be storing, uh, what are they going to do with their own data. That is, uh, they are not an object of study of uh, scientists. They are individuals, they have agency. This kind of project is allowing them to have that agency. So we are not, through this uh, uh, tool, patronizing them uh, in any way. We are just building a technology uh, that is perfectly known by them. They already use social media, they already have uh, networks, digital networks, they already gather and share information. Uh, all these individuals are uh, professors, are teachers, are doctors. They have to leave their normal lives, their professional lives, in order to start uh, becoming trackers and activists. Uh, that is, uh, this tailor-made technology is uh, something they know how to use. The only difference is in this case is made for them and they have all the control of the scope of, of the technology on their hands. To make a community-based archive of victims of forced disappearance while they protect and organize the data they originate. They require to file all information that has emerged and that keeps appearing with every expedition in a database that, that may be shared with other collectives. The group of Las Rastreadoras del Fuerte, which means the trackers of El Fuerte, is uh, made mainly of uh, women which are looking for their kids, their husbands, their spouses, uh, their family members that were victims of a forced disappearance. Every single week they go out, Wednesdays and Sundays. They leave at wee hours and then they return four to eight hours later after they go into the outskirts of the city of Los Mochis to look for illegal graves. Until now, Las Rastreadoras del Fuerte has found more than 120 corpses. They call them treasures. Those are the people that they lost in this war against civilians that is happening now in Mexico. presenting 74 to 100 uh, sound recordings of uh, shootings that civilians uh, recorded with their own uh, cell phones and upload them uh, into the YouTube uh, platform. talking about uh, affect in the sense of politics, affect in the sense of fear that is displaced the ambience of the everyday uh, of all these uh, citizens into the special kind of uh, uh, impolluted area of, uh, of the exhibition space.
Piece number two, uh, it deals with the situation of infants in Mexico. Infants that maybe their parents, either mother or father or both, were uh, um, victims of, of enforced disappearance. And uh, in that sense, they are looking uh, to cope, to learn how to cope and to grow under this stress situation, which has uh, not a clear end because these kids um, do not know for sure if their parents are alive or not. And in that sense, it's very difficult for uh, professors, teachers, psychologists like family members to help them uh, close circles uh, because there's no circle to be closed. They're always, uh, they, they have the, the, the hope of, of the returning parent. Beast number four comes from the universe of beast number three, in the sense that uh, it comes from the sounds and the interaction among uh, rastreadoras del fuerte, trackers of el fuerte. <laughs> The treatise uh, is made after a database of 15,585 images. Those images are the result of a research that went uh, through uh, 2006 and until 2012, which is the presidency of Felipe Calderón in Mexico. And I research uh, within the online uh, platforms for national media to uh, national outlets. And every single news dealing with the narco war or the war on drugs in Mexico was uh, subject of this, of this research. At the end, uh, with this database of 15,585 images that are intervened, uh, I did a silent installation and I also did uh, some silk screens like the ones that you're seeing here and some drawings and uh, also is a work in progress. Um, and from uh, detritus, the idea behind it, in a way, is to de normalize violence. Uh, we have seen, we are witness of uh, a normalization of violence right now in our country, and the idea behind it is to see how many images are circulating around and to pledge for a denormalization of violence. The artwork that you have seen uh, until now, they're part of this larger project that is still on the making, is work in progress. Like uh, this unnecessary force number three, uh, I still uh, have uh, ongoing strategies with rastreadoras and other collectives uh, to go and visit them to implement the second and third stages of the of the tool. Uh, also, we are appealing to calling the international and national communities in order to get the hardware to keep on going and get the full scope of this uh, um, tool, this uh, uh, social uh, media uh, kind of a structure made for them. And um, uh, the project will continue. The problem in Mexico is uh, has not finished yet. Uh, the question that drives this uh, art research project is not answered yet. So in that sense, uh, the whole scope of this uh, in research and art production uh, long-term project is still on the making. <laughs>